Hello YouTube, it's Team Game here, bringing you a Revenger deck breakdown from the France Regional Tournament, we'd say, the teams. Uh, we, we, we did very well, but you'll hear an explanation of that in a different video. This video is for Revengers. So this is the deck I was using, and I'll just go through it now. So you, you've got the standard 8 crit, 4 draw, 4 heal, because they're all Revengers! <laughs> and that's the way you run the deck. Uh, the uh, it does It does prompts that way of playing, it's quite aggressive but you need that bit of draw power to find Raging Form I wouldn't really tend to run more than 4 draws anyway in a deck like this so you might as well make it as consistent so you've never as you never considered can. running one of the old crits to make it 4 crit? No, because you need the draw power I'm afraid you just can't, it, the, game, uh, the game gets to that point where you have Raging Form, it's enough to really win uh, the starter wise, I do use the standard frontline Revenger Cl Clodius? Clodus? Clodus? Clodius. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, because I see it as stand up Blast of Dark. It's very good at comboing, which I'll explain later, uh, in that standard setup you need to look for. I do tend to see people wearing that creeping guard do goat, which creeped on the screen there for you. And uh, yeah, so it's the Grade 3 Searcher, the kind of last one put in a soul top 5. It's too inconsistent. I don't see re it's that you need to find Raging Form to win. There are situations you do need it, but majoritively the deck itself is a very good you know, play mechanic and you can swap out easily for a decent boost though, which I'll get out and explain later. So that'll be my grade zeros. Okay, grade one wise, you've got the four perfect guards, the four Maclears, you've got the four Dorian, uh, Dorian, Dor yeah. Well, it's a fair guys, this isn't really my two deck. I, I, I build these decks, but I don't. Name wise, I just I just call him the the um, flipper for Blast Dark, the 10k swinger and the AK beat. But anyway, um, Masquerade 10k swing at four and two of the AK beat sticks. You probably like what? What are you doing? I'll explain. As a lot of people. At I'll exp <laughs> no, no, that wasn't the bit. That wasn't the bit. They were like, what and about? <laughs> but anyway, you've got yeah. So the text people might tend to go for. You've got the the Dylan, the the basically a specific booster for Raging Form which tends to be in the deck because when you start the game you pull the starter to the back left or right open that space behind the vanguard and you go no guard, no guard, take the two damage, ride oh look I've called this specific booster from the deck but other than that Raging Form's always going to be on the vanguard I wouldn't consider it uh, as a, just a general you need a 7 in there because you've got a lot of 9's and why not you've got the counter blast 1 unflip no not unflip, uh, add a K which is the yeah. Bal Berith. Mm. Okay, yeah, so just as a standard seven to chuck in there, um, I tend to go for that. You, a lot in, uh, apparently in the Japanese mess, according to Aaron here, yeah. uh, you see a lot of the um, see a lot of people the Dark it. Bond Trumpeter, which is the rest. Uh, is it Counter Blast as well? Counter Blast 1, call a Grade 0. Oh, it's count in you, rest. Have to, you have to rest it. Oh, you rest what comes out? Yes. Okay, so, you, so, yeah, so you, when it's placed on the Vanguard or Rear Guard, you can. Call out grade zero. Now this is why you run another of the uh, the Claudius, the starter. So you call that from the deck, call it out, and then oh look, kind of blast phone soul, and get another blast dark out of the deck. No. It's, it's just a nice little thinning mechanic. You can use it as a plusing for the field, and also because Raging Form is such a neg, you can add the field advantage for a cheap little cost of one counter blast to then neg yourself to restand. I, so I don't think people use it to get the. Power sound to get another blast of dark. I think they just use it as just, just a nice target, little, just a nice plus, little canvas on plus. Yeah. It's just so they can neg it later on for a raging form. I think that's the entire point. As the, as the general tech of the great one at the end, I personally wouldn't go for the counter blast one because you're never going to use it for, for to, to add a K, and you don't uh, you, one column you can get away with as non revengers anyway. So my preference would actually be Guru Bell simply because it's just a nine K swing at the, helps, front. at the front. So it's just a that's why swing not boost. But it's so it just you can do that little little swarm and you can just put it in front of a, a seven and there you go you've got a nice little column. Um, other than that, it'd just be the rest count, the rest discard and draw. Just again because I'd rather my rearguard done something. Put behind it, the raging form. Yeah, in terms of um, how how I've prioritised these cards and not lowered any. Um, Standard four perfect guards, just because it's a very kind of heavy effect meta at the moment, I believe. So you need to stop these like high numbers and effects from hitting the and ride breaks things like that. Uh, the unflipper for blaster dark. Don't. Yeah. Uh, the uh, 
So you need you need to find that. It's just it's part of the main combo for ten k swing. Why not? And just because it's targetable by my playstyle, you got the eight k beat stick. So again, all be revealed in just a moment. And the grade twos, you're like what? I'll explain why. You got the 4 plus Dark Revenger. Why? Because the focus of the deck, the unflip stuff, but you don't use it for counter blasting. We'll explain later. You got the 4 Tartus and 4 and 3 Maka. What the hell? Because it's all about deck thinning. It's all about calling stuff from the deck. The way I've built it is not because of the Torque Swinger. It's, the, it's a setup that you get at the start. You need to do the uh, combos and things like that. I was going to pass me the alternatives, so I thought to get him up. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, other than that, all you can read, really again, I'll explain the combos and things in the final part, but you've got the Masquerade, which people generally use, just because it's the 12-way swinger. I believe, in the current meta, there's not as much cross-riding going on, because people went defenders, and there aren't many cross-rides in defenders that people will tend to use. And even then, it's unlikely they'll get it off, so you can get away with just hitting 16s. So that Maka coin the 8k, the Tartu coin the 7k, the Blast of Dark being able to unflip, it's all you need to do. So in general, taking it out opened a lot of options for you. Uh, again, so the same as the 10k beat stick, unless you're running the 8k, which I am, but the, the whole point of a 10k beat stick is to 18 or just as a standard swing, if you don't plus, but because they call boosters very easily, you don't need to worry about getting that uh, single niggle off just because just you can't find a booster. Um, for combo orientated cards, you've got the Blast of Dark Spirit, which you can just ride and then call it out and then counter blast, and that's just lol I thought I'd chuck it in there anyway, because it's fun. What do you mean ride, count blast, call it out? Well, no, with the ride break. Oh, right, okay, so, so, sure. So you, no, I should have really explain that. <laughs> but yeah, so you, 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 this thing's to call out with the break ride, so the other tech you can throw in, just, just, just for random plus, is the main, but as you can see, 3k, not really doing much for you. But I guess if you're focusing on finding raging form, you might consider it. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I've tried it, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. You want to break ride it and then call it out, counter blast it to do this, plus that two. Uh, plus two, right? You're just going to draw it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. As a standard lineup, it's, 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 it's taking out what we, you normally see as the four masquerade for three muckers and another tartu. So, it's just focusing on that, that calling, which. You hear about it a bit, so on to grade threes, which yeah, I mean, I know it'll be hard to guess, but we'll see. Okay, and uh, as you could have guessed, you've got the four raging form and the four break ride of Mordred Phantom. Mordred Phantom, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anyway, so as the as a standard kind of alternative, what we're saying deck play style it is, the the break ride is just in there because it's eleven k. There are alternatives, but if you do need to have, drop a niggle or you need to um, just stay on something, at least it's swinging for an extra two, at least you can break ride it, at least you've got that 11k on the rear guard. So you don't need to really worry about much, if you, you can plus from the deck, you can get that extra power, at least it's aggressive in some sense. But as as you look at the alternatives, um, I, I'll keep my, uh, my the, <laughs> I'll, I'll lower it in interest as it goes along. Um, so you've got the, actually what Aaron quite liked for a while, is the um, de, uh, DR, DR mood? DR mood? Yeah. yeah, so you've got the promo. It is a very good card, and it plays off the idea in the deck of I plus, and then I get rid of... So I, the way I play style I'd use it for is I call the Tartu out, I get the booster. I attack with that column, attack with the Vanguard, neg myself that booster that I just called out, and during my opponent's phase, I will intercept, open that full column, and then recall the full column out. And that's the way I try and do it, and then obviously trigger dump on that four column as a third attack. Uh, but again, it was 10k, it goes against the deck of plussing, and you neg enough with raging form. Any issues you found with Aaron at all? Or? Nope. No. It's a limit break. It, it's, it's, it's limit break. And there's no way to get there apart from taking the damage. Yeah. If so I would run that, I'd love to have a damage out there. But we don't have it. No, we don't have it. No, no. And even then, there's no 6k one, which sucks. Um, if you're still focused on Vanguards, this this I loved as a tech. My God, but it's so situational. Uh, you got the Dark Dictator. Now this is cool. As a standard ride, you don't want to do it. But you imagine break riding it. You break ride. You can you can't blast to call out that unit with the break ride. You then got a very heavy swinging Vanguard. It's two K for each Shadow Paladin rear guard, so that's you know two, four, six. 
three, four, six, yeah, it's ten. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's, so it's, it's swing from maximum to twenty. 30. It's thirty. So you got a thirty k <laughs> column in the middle. You've got um, twenty one on the right. Well, no, you've got more than that. You've got twenty six because you use the effect and add five k to two. Well, it's, it's two. Yeah, front row one. So yeah, so it'd be twenty six, twenty one, and thirty. So just as a, a break ride, that is phenomenally powerful. But admittedly, it would be meh afterwards, but at least you've got a push alternative. So I did test just the tech of one. I never actually got it off, really. But if I did, it'd be silly. But it seemed too combo orientated, and I did always fear drawing into it and having to ride it. As rear guards go, you've got... Um, well, actually, it's still a pretty good card in a deck like this. You need to plus in. The, um, the I call it a Vanguard rear guard. Reveal the top card. It's a shadow band and call it. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't need to be in it, it's just cool. So yeah, um, if you were to call it as the rear guard, just to make that cheap plus for the clone, so you don't neg yourself so much, then yeah, but again, I wouldn't like to take the risk. And at a national tournament, we don't really want to take risks. And um, the, 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 the German sounding... <laughs> the Schalgen! The I, I rewrite a grade 3, and it gets 10k power. Again, I would never run a card like that because it's far too combo orientated. I know you're going for the Raging Form effect, but if you want to put your eggs in one basket, go ahead. But as a standard ride, again, you're sitting on 10, it's not doing anything. So, focus is always the way we build deck, why I build decks. And, yeah, so I'll go, now I'll just go through the combos and hopefully you'll understand where I'm going with this. Okay, so in terms of Combos, advantages, disadvantages of running the deck and things like that. Uh, this is pretty much how I, I went to play the deck and it was pretty successful, but I'll give a little summary towards the end. You stand, you stand up your vanguard, move straight back to the rearguard booster. I generally never go for the rearguard simply because of the way I play, the play style of this deck. Grade 2 ride, if you have an option, just get the blast dark out of your hand. You don't really want to have to wait, you never use the effect of Blast Dark, you always use it as an unflipping mechanic. Now in order to do that, you of course need to find said unflipper. So as soon as you take two damage, you want to be a, you can do the grade two rush. And if people give it to you, abuse it. So you'd either call the Tartu or the Maka, depending on what you have. The Tartu you'd always call out the Dora, where you want to call it. Um, and the Maka, you can also call the Dora out. If it's a grade two rush. If it's a grade two rush. Um, otherwise, you just use, you can always use a tinker swing or something, or just drop any niggles you got. Um, but the muck is in there mainly if you want to call it to call out the AK beat stick as that trigger dumping column. So maybe you get two counter blasts. It's dangerous because your opponent will just get swarmed, and that rush don't, people don't expect. I never get bored of people to expressions when I drop that mucker. The guy just stared at it for a good couple of minutes before he went what? <laughs> uh, that was just amazing. But anyway. Um, Ideally, as well, if you have an option between the brake ride and the raging form, just drop the raging form. Just, I'd never sit. There's no point in negging yourself like that, because you, as soon as that's active, you're done. It, it's just a, a holdout card. Don't don't go for the brake ride because your counter blasts are too precious to sting the deck. So anyway, so of course you want to go for the raging form. Um, the general play is to call out the the door in, um, and insert the way. Use it. Use start. So you use two counts blast. As soon as you get to three, use counter blast. Cut. Put it in soul. Call out another blast dark. Unflip. And then again, you're active and waiting away until you get to a four counter blast. And then you counter blast it again. To call out another unit. And it's just a, a little quick thinning mechanic that allows you to rush. Um, yeah, and, and of course, you haven't the, actually said it, but the, the other reason being, as I just just let me finish. Out, no. Okay, is you need to get rid of the starter to get that seven k beyond the vanguard. So, simply because, if needs be, which I've done plenty of times, if you're generally beating your opponent anyway, you can go ahead and counter blast as you attack to swing for 21, which is a very overlooked mechanic of Raging Form. And, of course, you go ahead, try and get the effect off, neg away, and then off you drop to call another um, Tartu wherever you can. Then refill your field out. And uh, yeah, because I'm totally organised here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you just keep the field advantage up. Other than that, um, it's, it's just a standard deck, but it's just so powerful with the restand. <coughs> and that Maka column's there as a just help fill out that right column, so you don't need to keep dropping your hand so much. Uh, 
can't really think of too much else, Aaron. You didn't say it a minute ago, but you said when as soon as you get two counter blast, yeah, two counter blast, you can recall a Tartu or a Maka and then call another unit out. Are you replacing said unit as the booster? Assuming it's not gone, or are you waiting to raging form? Well, as as I I generally uh, went for is if you've got the two counter blast there, and say you've you've got a free rear guard and you've got a Tartu in your hand, rather than just calling it. I generally went to replace the booster, so it gets a booster out of your deck and it helps you find it by one because sometimes Raging Form is the only pressure you have so you need to you need to find it. So that, that's what I generally went for but if I had the field advantage I'd just use that the, the standard free cast blast as just 21 21 because if you're on 11k Vanguard and I attack for 21 with the Vanguard and you know then I get Raging Form's effect off it's 21 again. It's just it's ridiculous. But of course, um, uh, as I previously said, you would always use the Blast Darks in your hand. You keep that sp space free as much as you can to drop that Blaster Dark to one flip. And you just use it as an unflipping mechanic. Don't ever <laughs> use it as a retirement thing unless that's literally the only thing going for you. Which I've done the once at the National Tournament. But in general, the deck played very well. Um, I only lost uh, one of, or two of my games, because once in the top eight, uh, due to my grade locking, uh, one of which wasn't my fault, <laughs> I stacked my deck, which uh, we'll discuss later on in the uh, or the summary of the national tournament. But uh, I only lost one game because one game really um, because the uh, choice was there for me. I can of, actually remember basically what your field was. It was along the lines of that. It was that, and I had, a... I had a mucker in my hand. <coughs> so, at the end of the day, the guy had... I, I, I saw in my head, I could either call out an 8k beat stick, and make it, when I dropped it, to make it trigger for game. Because it's... If it's a fire... The, I counted it in his hands. Like, one card, two card, three... Okay, he's got, he's got enough to do one to pass. And that's all I could hope for. So I called that... Drove check away, and what do you know? Where is it? There it is. I go drive check nothing, whatever. Drive check raging form, and I was like, I just I've lost. <laughs> but you know, if, the, and if he called something like that instead, he would have gone. He would have gone like blah 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 blah. Guard guards. But and, at least you had the three. But, but at least I had the three things, um, because he, he he could have done perfect guard, uh, which he had and um, 10k, which would have guarded the trigger dump. So either, if, if I went to swing at the vanguard, he would have perfect guarded it. He had 10k in his hand. If I got two triggers, then I got two triggers. But I'd rather it wasn't double trigger for game, or, and rage, or raging form. Yeah. I'd rather just trigger for game. It was just that horrible yeah. situation. It was just that one situation where Marco <laughs> really screwed me over. But, but it's not, though, because logically speaking, you have more triggers than raging form, so you have more of a chance to win. And the, the loss was in the top eight, but... Again, we'll explain that another time, but it was, I was at a massive disadvantage, like, complete trigger wazoo. Uh, and, yeah. So, in general, the deck works very well. I definitely recommend this way of playing Raging Form. It's... How strongly do you recommend the Maka? <laughs> 100%. It's... Because whenever I played it as original way, it was very kind of, I haven't found Tartu, I haven't found Tartu, I haven't found Doran, I haven't found Doran, I, I can't do anything. But I can just swing with 12k. Now it's going into... As soon as set 13 comes out, unfortunately, this way of playing is going to be more difficult. Because as soon as they get that cross right off, you need those 12ks. You need to hit 13. You need to hit 23. Whatever, you need 18. Um, so, yeah, it's, you, in the day, you need to use it. Unless, of course, you're going to run this 10k and 8k beat stick. So Raging Form is going to lose its well, power a little could, bit, I think. You could always take out the Blast of Dark. But then you've lost the unflipping mechanic. You just set me up for that. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. End of the day. Um, it's, it's, uh, it took a little bit making it. I was tested a few theories, as you previously heard. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it was somewhat the cornerstone... Well, I thought it'd be the cornerstone of our thing, but it ended up being <laughs> my descendant. <laughs> But anyway, so, yeah, and that pretty much summarises the way the deck plays, and it's, it's very successful, so I, I'd uh, recommend trying it.
Okay, and that was my Revenger Raging Form Deck Breakdown. So, Featuring Tartu and Maka. <laughs> with, with Tartu and Maka. <laughs> Round of applause. So, yes, thank you, thank you guys for listening. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll have some more content coming with you soon. Yay. Yeah! See you guys later.